Bachelor Swordsman here. It's July 4th, 2022. Uh, I'll just keep on repeating my points uh, which I've made over the last couple of weeks or months. I know it might be repetitive, but I, I think it really is that important to grasp, basically, that, uh, I mean, if you are a, let's say, a trader or whatever, I mean, there's a saying, if you're gonna panic, panic first. Uh, now when we're this deep in a correction, I mean, you can look at some of the other corrections in uh, GDXJ here. Uh, here, I mean, depending on where you draw the line and ev even if you go even higher, that wasn't uh, the worst correction ever. Anyway, so here we have a 63% down leg, top to bottom. 51% almost top to bottom uh, flash crash 58% where we've reached 52.6% and you know m most people again like always they look at the past and they pro uh, predict the future whereas in reality I mean the worse the past uh, the better the future I mean this monumental bear market from the euphoric top of uh, 2011 uh, when that bottom this was the best quarterly 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 rally in miners ever uh, if i remember correctly so basically the worst past possible then you had a uh, the fastest move higher ever in uh, one in, within a quarter uh, in miners so now, now is, in my opinion, not the time to uh, think about, you know, selling. I mean, I, I, I thought a, a bunch of juniors have already been sheep since, yeah, at least around a year, I think. I mean, I, I think there's always, like, up here, there are typically a few juniors that are still sheep, even though it's very uh, much harder to actually find them, and you need to do, do a lot of due diligence. Right now, I mean, there are some obscene examples out there about just how uh, sheep the junior sector is overall. I mean, one good example, I think, is uh, I-80 Gold. I mean, I, I just thought it funny that uh, I think I actually started buying some up here. Uh, then I think I added some around here after the this monster hole. And, and look where we are now. It's like gold hasn't changed that much. Not much has changed, really. Uh, but if you just looked at the share price, you would think that something had gone catastrophically wrong for I-80. But when you actually look at what has happened in terms of fundamentals they, they, there have been more news releases that they got some water permits as well i think over the you know last couple of months i was like look at these hits you, you don't get hits like this too often <laughs> and and it's like what what people get paranoid about is that okay share price if you thought it was cheap here let's say and then you know the mr market totally disagrees with you and everybody, you know, has the same thoughts, like the market knows something, yada, yada. Okay, if the market knows something, you know, who would the market know better than the CEO? He bought a whopper 560,000 worth of shares right here. And uh, on 30, 30th of uh, June, he bought for another $250,000. Who would know better than the CEO and it makes perfect sense because you have increasing fundamentals meaning they may make discoveries and and you know step out holes that hit very good interceptions they have what four projects like two mills whatever some projects are semi permitted because they you know have seen historic mining I mean this I-80 is just a perfect example I think of how just how ridiculous the market can be at times and it's like if you think the market is always efficient the market is always right etc and, and you see this or this trend here uh, it's like uh, i said today on twitter again it's like if, if you're at a have a 50 percent correction and you think that's a big problem i mean 
I, I don't see it that way at all. But most people used past, uh, recent past as evidence why this market is hard. Now, this, the, what we're seeing now in recent past is evidence of why you can beat the junior sector and any sector, any market, because this is irrationally cheap. And that, even the CEO says that. And he's already loaded up with stock, so it's not like he, he is, um, you know, didn't have any skin in the game. And it's not like these are just small purchases. These are pretty big purchases. So it's like every, everything is screaming and blinking, you know, uh, this is a time to be a buyer, this is a time to be a buyer. And, and I know how it typically goes. I mean, I thought this was actually the bottom. We, when we made the undercut here and it went up, I, I thought this was enough of an undercut, like, you know, this uh, fake out, fake out. And now we had it even lower. So, I mean, from my perspective, any value investor's perspective, and you can bet your ass that uh, this uh, CEO is a value investor. Uh, he, he's not a trader. It's going to be hard for an insider to <laughs> you know, trade the markets uh, due to perception. So he's buying because sheep just got incredibly cheaper. And typically what happens is like, I, I have no idea if this is the bottom. We might go down here. We might flash crash to down here. Whatever. It's like, this is the trend, I think. The price to value gap in the juniors especially is like mind-numbingly large. I mean, even if you have strategic melts, if it goes down here, I mean, it's just going to go up higher. So it's like, that's not a problem uh, in my book. It's like, if you, bu if you bought something uh, that went down 50% and should go down 50%, then you have a problem because um, it wouldn't be right to get that money back because you overpaid for it. It should go down 50% and stay down. But if you bought something that is cheap and went down, let's say 50%, that's frustrating, but at the same time, it opens up even more. I mean, if, if uh, what's his name? Uh, Robert Downey or something like that. I, I don't actually remember. I mean, he's going to make even more if he held on to all his shares and, and the story got even better and he's just buying more. He's just going to make even more money in the future. So it's like, is this, a, is this kind of action a blessing or a curse? I mean, that depends if you have dry powder or if you can uh, shift some holdings, for example, because not uh, many juniors have had the results this company has. Uh, but maybe they have, you know, not gone down, gone down this much, so you could sell that and buy this. I mean, that's uh, just opportunity arbitrage in my book. Uh, yeah, so it's like, be prepared for everything. I mean, th this is already beyond cheap, and I have no idea if it's going to get cheaper, because, I mean, obviously, the CEO, when he bought this, he thought, wow, this, you know, this is so low. I mean, Jesus Christ, I have to buy here. Uh, you know, I can't believe my eyes. I mean, we put out this kind of, you know, uh, these kinds of numbers and the stock is down here. And then it's still fell even, even farther. Maybe that was a fund uh, readjusting or getting out. You know how these funds work. I mean, they sell out at, uh, at the bottom because investors withdraw their money. I mean, sell at the exact wrong uh, time, pretty much. Uh, so he didn't know that, but I think he's going to make money on this buy. I think he's going to make even more money on this buy. And if I would go in lower, I think he's going to make even more money on that buy. So it's like if you fast forward the tape two years or whatever, maybe we'll be up, you know, well, here or something. I mean, that's going to be a you know, few hundred percent on this buy. Uh, so again, yes, I, I guess I am a bit repetitive, but that's also the point uh, because again we, we can be grinding we, we might have some movement like this there might be six more months of grinding and i might have to repeat myself throughout all that time because for again for a value investor for any buy low sell high kind of guy your your strategy is strictly that buy low sell high if something is low and goes lower, that just means it's an, easy, an even more obvious buy. That's not a problem because everything that's go, gone too low is going to go too high. 
afterwards. Because here it went too low, then this was actually too high. Um, so so again, it's like I, I've done nothing. I think I, today I've looked at the share price of two stocks out of my 40 stocks. There was not much news. I saw Firefox Gold closing a private placement, uh, not material news. So it's like nothing has changed for my portfolio value wise, value wise, really. And and I doubt that any of my holdings is up, you know, 200 percent to fair value. So it's like I don't have much to do uh, except, again, wait for the next leg uh, up. And when we reach the next sentiment high, which might be. Now, this was 2016, uh, four years. M maybe it takes two years before we're up here. But at that point, I think I'm 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 gonna be up. I don't know, you know, three four hundred percent or whatever. Well worth the wait. Even if you're down fifty percent, that would be would be well worth the wait. Uh, simple as that. It's not sexy. It's not boring. It's it's the simplest strategy I can think of hodl hodl growth and it works wonders it pays very well very low maintenance but it's just mind-numbingly boring most of the time because 99 percent of the time you're just waiting you're just holding your stock because as long as a case is intact a growth case is intact for the next you know 12 to 24 months that means uh, you, you pretty much do nothing for 12 to 24 months. The polar opposite of being a day trader. And what we humans typically do, we, we think we can fix something. We, we want to be doing something. And that's why, you know, most are going to lose. Because it's extremely hard to do nothing for an extended period of time. Just look around you. I mean, today with social media and... and uh, instant gratification i mean the funny thing is that it is obvious what you should do it's just so goddamn hard to actually do it and th that's why most people will underperform because they think well it's not working it's been going down i need to do something i need to shift sectors i i need to who knows i need to start day trading to make this right no you just need to wait for the sheep to you know, go from selling extremely low and perhaps even lower to when it starts to form another trend and the ones that sold because of this trend they're going to be buying because they all of a sudden see hey you can make money in this sector so they're going to be buying up here and buying up here and buying up here or whatever we're just waiting for the flock of sheep to go the other way and uh, you know uh, there's probably some pretty smart people strong hands that are buying all these uh, lows here like the CEO in this case if you're betting against uh, you know insiders all the time and you think that's a you know very wise strategy especially after you know blatantly good news is out and you expect that I, I, how can you how can you justify that you can't really justify it because it makes no sense I mean the strategy comes first, the results come later. So you have to you have to trust and stick to your strategy. You can't change strategies all the time. It's like Cabral Gold recently. I mean, they've been putting out really good news. Uh, and I uh, got into the private placement at 30 cents. I think the stock hit 24 cents recently and they've been they've been getting permits they've been getting out positive metallurgical results etc so it's like fundamentals have just been you know climbing 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 and prices just gone down 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 so so we don't really have a problem for a value investor this is like the nirvana this is this is in my opinion way better opportunity in 2015-16 and uh, polar opposite to this period when uh, juniors got ex actually incredibly overvalued on average now they're just incredibly undervalued uh, so again uh, beyond clear what any buy low or value invest value investor would do and that's not going to change even if some juniors go up you know 10 20 percent i mean th that's just ripples basically that's just flipping pennies 
I'm after the big moves like always because I I am always uh, and have been always 100% long so I, I've been uh, apart from the bottom tick to the top and then back again and then up again and then back it's just that uh, typically I'm into growth stories like I said a bunch of times so the uh, kind of I mean we can take GDXJ as an example I mean uh, if we pretend this is a growth stock you at least have you know higher highs higher lows except the flash crash and then higher high and now we have a higher low and I expect this to you know just continue something I don't know when it's gonna turn maybe maybe this was actually the bottom maybe we go something like this and it goes down here I don't know it's just that the, from from this level and from this level uh, respectively I, I expect to uh, be in positive territory on on uh, on, on all buys basically even though I don't invest in the GDXJ uh, so again it's like focus on the things you can control enjoy the summer get in shape read some books do stuff that's actually productive because the management teams are working for your benefit all the time uh, Mr. CEO here he's uh, made sure that you know these results came out and then he's buying his own cooking and then he's working even more because now he has even more skin in the game so so you're buying their labor of the growth companies that means that you you don't have to work looking at stock prices or shorts every day and following every tick that's not work that's just procrastination uh so i mean i i cannot i mean i i feel like i'm very spoiled right now it's like I can buy these incredibly cheap assets and, and the labor of the management teams for pennies on the dollar and all I have to do is wait and I can do whatever I want this summer because I know I'm, I'm already winning because I'm not losing because losing would be selling low and I'm not doing that I'm buying low so this strategy uh, is going to pan out like it always does buy low sell high always works by definition uh, it's just a matter of how low they go and how high they go etc uh, yeah don't don't sweat it too much I mean it probably feels shit now but I, I bet you that anyone who bought any of these lows they, they feel pretty good about it a year or two later uh, consider me biased assume I own shares of all companies I mentioned uh, I think most are sponsors as well, not I-80. Uh, do your own due diligence. Uh, enjoy the summer and, uh, you know, stay strong. Bye.